G'day guys, E53 here and it's that time of year, the Formula 1 Championship has gone on its summer break so I thought it might be a good time to just uh, sit back and maybe just analyse a little bit of what we've seen so far in the season. Of course I did do a video after pre-season testing started just uh, I guess giving predictions for the season, some have turned out right, some have turned out wrong so if you want to go back and watch that video, go back have a look at it. Um, and then we can come back to uh, come back to this one about where we sit right now. So jump straight into it anyway. So go through them team, team by team, I think. So um, Mercedes, as predicted at the start of the year, not everyone was predicting it actually, but uh, I certainly did, that Mercedes were going to come out strong. Probably didn't expect them to be as dominant as they have been. I mean, it took until Austria for them to get beaten. So I don't think anyone really expected them to win every race up until that stage. But either way, was expecting them to come out firing. Bottas looked as though he'd taken a step forward at the start of the season and appears now to have fallen away. And for some reason, Mercedes talking as though they want to replace him, put Ocon in the car. I'm, I'm kind of in two minds about that. I sort of think that... Number one, Bottas is doing exactly what they hired him for, which is being just slower than Lewis. They didn't want another Rosberg-Hamilton scenario. They wanted somebody who would keep the peace and not ruffle Hamilton's feathers too much. And that's what they got. That's exactly what they got. So whether they decided to start looking elsewhere when he at the start of the season, when he, when he really did start to give Hamilton some serious trouble, or whether it's based on his form since then... Um, it looks like they're, they're sort of gearing up to put Icon in the car, which, you know, it's great for Icon. He deserves to be on the grid. But I'm not really sure sort of why now and and why they changed that team dynamic. It seems quite good. And apart from that, of course, you know, Lewis is just killing it. I mean, he, yes, he's got the best car, but he's driving the, driving the wheels off it. So, you know, he's just doing what he does when he's happy. And, uh, you know, who knows what will happen if Ocon comes along, whether Ocon will be able to... He'll certainly come in with an attitude of wanting to beat Lewis and not wind up having gone down the Bottas route. So, you know, if that, if that happens, you know, is Lewis going to start to get sort of a bit downcast if he starts to get challenged and start putting his Twitter, his telemetry on Twitter and stuff like that? You know, who knows, but... Um, either way, he's at the top of his game at the moment, looks well on the way to a sixth title, and it's really hard to see who who in the field would be able to stop him at the moment. So that one almost seems done. So moving on to second place, Ferrari. Now, at the start of the year, again, I predicted Ferrari to be in second place, but it's been a lot closer with Red Bull than one would think, and the way that Red Bull's come on in the last few races, you could almost make a good case for them being the second best team rather than Ferrari. But as things stand, Ferrari are still P2 in the Constructors' Championship. And one of the stories that everyone was looking at at the start of the year and continues to look at, actually, is how Leclerc was going to get on. And he's done really well. He's made mistakes, of course, owned up to him. He's probably actually made a few too many for Ferrari's liking, but... He's still, he's, he's got the pace. And as Max Verstappen has shown, as a newcomer, you can make a lot of mistakes so long as the raw pace is there. It's when the raw pace isn't there, like, say, for example, Gasly, and you make mistakes, that you end up losing your job. But Leclerc's got that pace. He's been able to challenge Vettel. He should have probably won a couple of races this year already. As it stands, Ferrari are, are still winless, but... That overriding feeling that Ferrari has something fundamentally wrong behind the scenes in personnel or operationally or something like that. It's it, it just it's just just this feeling that they could build the best car in the field and they still wouldn't run it properly. You know, they'd still screw up their strategies and they'd still make mistakes that Mercedes don't make and Red Bull don't make, really, for that matter. So I think Vettel 
is starting to wear that expression on his face that Alonso started to wear after a number of years at Ferrari when he, it's sort of it starts to dawn on him that f he, they just don't believe Ferrari's ever going to get it done and you can kind of sympathize with them because you know when Vettel came in instead of Fernando everyone was saying oh you know we're competitive now because there's a good feeling in the team and you know Vettel brings this and that well, well where's that now and how how many championships has it given you since none and they you know we they, they're changing team principles all the time you know they got rid of um Domenicali Domenicali yeah that's right a few couple of years ago and then they brought in Arriva Bene and then they've got rid of him and they got Bonotto in and the only thing that anybody ever seems to be able to tell you about Bonotto is that he's calm you know but you know he's an engineer so I think they've just had a had a restructure just recently to to allow him to focus more on the engineering side of things and, and have somebody else there to kind of give him a hand with uh, you know the sort of the five jobs he's doing at Ferrari at the moment but yeah you know, they really need to um, pull it together if they're going to win a title because Red Bull are back on the resurgence and speaking of Red Bull they're the ones who've made the headlines for the last few days having announced that they're going to swap Gasly for Albon they're going to send Gasly back down to Toro Rosso quite simply because he hasn't been performing and I'm not really convinced about that particular move. Um, I mean, Gasly hasn't done a good job. That's not really up for debate. But at the same time, Red Bull said at the start of this year when they promoted Gasly, they said, look, we didn't want to promote him that early. We, our hand was kind of forced by Ricardo leaving. So we've actually promoted Gasly a year earlier than we would have wanted to. So based upon that, surely it is then on you to give him that year grace period to actually learn and get up to speed. And it's not like he's trying to match a teammate like you know, Grosjean or Magnussen. He's up against Max Verstappen. You know, even towards the end of last year, Ricardo was struggling to match Max Verstappen, and he'd been there for years. So... It's not really a fair yardstick, especially with somebody that you have already admitted you promoted too early because you were forced to, to then give him half a season and then ditch him. It, it, I don't know. I don't know. I think he should have been given more time, and I think he has been fairly hard done by, to be honest. But Red Bull do this, and I don't know why they seem so intent on just showing the rest of the world how ruthless their young driver program is when they've burned through so much good talent. I mean, they had an option to bring Saints back in this year. They didn't take it. And look at the job he's now doing at McLaren. So, you know, speaks for itself, really, I think. But anyway, Verstappen's going along really well. Won two races already. Might have won a third, had circumstances been slightly different last time out. So, yeah, he's doing a great job. A lot of the time, people seem to say, oh, you know, they want to... People, say that the best comes out of drivers when they've got a strong teammate. And with Verstappen, it seems to be the opposite. He's very, very comfortable. Red Bull is his team now, and he's just getting on and just doing the business. The mistakes are gone, the speeds remained, and he's doing an incredible job. So uh, he's the main reason why they're up there third in the championship with a chance of uh, snatching second away from Ferrari. So um, anyway, it brings us on to McLaren, who are there in fourth. Surprised, actually. I, put, I think I put them sixth at the start of the year in sort of my predictions, but they've been so much better than that. Um, the car is obviously leaps and bounds ahead of the car they had last year. Saints are showing the same sort of form that he showed when he when he almost matched Verstappen when they were together at Toro Rosso. He's been driving brilliantly. Lando Norris has been great as well, really stand out, especially in qualifying performances from Norris. Um, done, done a great job so um, things really going along well there at McLaren of course they've just recently announced they're doing an IndyCar program as well which is going to be really interesting to watch and whether or not they're going to uh, perhaps have some drivers in their IndyCar team that they're going to watch for potential to move across to Formula 1 in the future who knows but that could be a really good crossover it's been a while since we've seen 
anyone graduate from IndyCar across to Formula One. I think Bourdais might have been the last one, and that was getting on towards 10 years ago. So um, it'd be good to see. It'd be good to see a bit of that crossover again. I mean, it worked for Jacques Villeneuve, didn't it? So, and Montoya. They didn't do badly, did they? So there's clearly some talent over there that uh, Formula One could be tapping into rather than just grabbing everybody who comes up through the traditional route. So um, be interested to see it if it uh, comes to pass. So Toro Rosso, fifth place at the moment, and they are, they've kind of flown under the radar a little bit, although I don't think anyone's really surprised to see them fifth. I guess what they're more surprised about is that they're ahead of Renault, but yeah, they, both their drivers have done solid jobs. Um, of course, the big news, as we mentioned before, Albon is jumping ship, going up to Red Bull, and Gasly's going to be coming back down to join Fiat uh, down there at Toro Rosso. A lot of people seem to think that Albon was the wrong choice and that they should have taken Kvyat. Um I'd have to agree with them, really. I mean, if if Red Bull have made that change because they want to challenge Ferrari for a second in the constructors, which is, I, I guarantee you, as they talk more in the next couple of weeks, that's what they're going to say. But if they want that, surely they want the experienced guy who's in really good form, who's been there before, all the rest of it. What they've done by promoting Albon, who you tend to find a lot of the British commentators are going on and praising him because he's got that British... Um, I think he races under the Thai nationality, doesn't he? But he's you know, grown up in England. And what they've sort of done is it's almost similar to taking a shot from the halfway line. You know, They're just kind of hoping something, hoping something happens. I would have gone with Kvyat myself simply for those reasons I already mentioned. He's in great form, he's got the experience. If you're wanting someone to back for Stappen up, he's the guy who should be doing it, not the rookie. You know, you've already made the mistake of burning Gasly by promoting him too early. Why do the same to Albon? It's not like he's been a massive standout there. Um, you know, he's done a solid job. I'm not saying he hasn't, but he's he's been solid but not spectacular. And he's a good few places behind his teammate in the championship, although that that uh, podium that uh, Kvyat got has a lot to do with that. But, yeah, I would have put Daniel in uh, rather than Albon. And I just kind of worry now that if Albon doesn't perform, he'll be dumped as well and he'll be damaged goods and, and that'll be the end of his career, which isn't really fair on him either. But, anyway, they've made their choice. Um, all right, Renault. As an Aussie... Obviously not happy to see Renault down here. Um, I oh, I don't know how much of it was wishful thinking and how much wasn't, but I was really thinking that they would be fourth best this year. Um, they are definitely not. They've had their issues. They seem to have taken a step backwards. They really did appear to be on an upward trend at uh, the start of, what well, the end of last year, really. And that just seems to have all fallen away. And that they, I think no one really disputes that they've made some real gains on the engine side but that chassis is a pig and they don't really seem to understand why and they like when they got to austria and they had all those aero problems both the drivers were reporting that down the straights the nose was kind of swishing from side to side a bit you know it, it's it doesn't make a lot of sense from the outside how a team like renault could get it so wrong but anyway they have that car's just born badly it's it's yeah it's not good, and I guess they, you know, all of Australia is sort of really hoping that they manage to sort it out so we can get Daniel back up the front again. I'm sure there's a few guys who aren't Aussies who'd like to see Ricardo up the front again, and also like to see Hulkenberg get that podium he's been after for so long. Um, threw it away, unfortunately, at Hockenheim, didn't he? But um, maybe he can he can get a resurgence, and if Renault have a resurgence and they keep him, and I'm not sure why they'd get rid of him. To be perfectly honest, he's doing a perfectly fine job so those two together driving Renault forward they need experienced drivers in that team at this stage they don't need to be bringing in a rookie they need experienced drivers to give their feedback and help drive that team forward and you kind of believe that with the might of Renault behind them you know the manufacturer and so on they can get the job done but yeah I don't know it doesn't seem like it's going to happen this year but it's going to want to at least start to look like it's going to happen next year because, you know, 
Ricardo's only got that two-year contract, and but of course at the same time you sort of think, where's Ricardo going to go? Um, if there's no seats available at Mercedes and Ferrari, he's sure as hell not going back to Red Bull. McLaren, I don't know, maybe, but uh, Renault are going to want to put that beyond all doubt and really improve their performance uh, second half of this year and into 2020. Brings us down to Alfa Romeo in seventh place, and I honestly thought that they'd be higher up in the points than that. I was actually surprised when I looked up the points table here and seen them so far down because they've been good. I mean, Raikkonen's been good. Um, and I think that the team formerly known as Sauber, of course, as Alfa Romeo is, was, would have benefited more than they probably have from being Ferrari's proper B team now. Um, they sort of stole that title away from Haas, didn't they? Um, the very close relationship Ferrari had with Haas. Now it's Ferrari and Alfa Romeo. You've got Kimi in there, who's doing a great job. You've got Giovinazzi in there, who's only scored the one point so far this year and isn't really looking as though he's, despite the fact he's a Ferrari junior, doesn't really seem to be showing any kind of form that would suggest that he's ready for a move up to Ferrari at any point. So if they're going to be using Alfa as a place to bring in their, their young drivers and maybe use Kimi as a yardstick. Um, it's it's not really working well for Giovinazzi, so maybe we'll see somebody else in there next season. And going down to eighth place, we've got Racing Point. Not a whole much to say about them. I think I said at the start of the year that they were likely to suffer due to the ownership problems that they had last year that went from the changing from Force India into Racing Point, um, and they've admitted as much that their preparation for this year was really hampered by it. Um, apparently they've got a B-spec car coming online a bit later on. Not sure exactly when that is, but um, yeah, they're only one point off um, Alpha and only a handful of points away from Renault, only eight points um, behind Renault as well. So if the B-spec car, I mean, that team being, at, when they were Force India, had in the past introduced B-spec cars around about Spa as well and they're usually a fairly fairly good jump forward so I wouldn't write them off just yet although the, their start has not been great um, Haas what do you say about Haas <laughs> um, they've got a tricky car and their drivers keep driving into one another and their sponsor is bananas um, I think I said at the start of the year that I think my one bold prediction was that that deal with Rich Energy was going to hit trouble this year at some point. It just had all the looks of a dodgy something that didn't quite make sense about it, you know, despite the fact that nobody's ever seen a can of Rich Energy. Um, but yeah, it just it, it had that look of something that was going to go south. It has. Now the cars still say Rich Energy on it, but they're trying to say they've changed their name to Lightning Vault or something like that. William Story's getting on Twitter, bagging the team during races. It's it's weird. And I can't imagine that that, that car's going to be painted up in Rich Energy next year. Or Lightning Vault for that matter. Which is a shame because they, they thought that they landed a big title sponsor, somebody that was going to help push them forward and, and it just hasn't... They've been burned, it's not their fault. So, but, uh, you know, they've also got Grosjean and Magnussen that are driving into each other a lot. Um, the general accepted wisdom seems to be at the moment that Grosjean, barring a massive turnaround, is going to get replaced at the end of the year. You can sort of see why, but on the other hand, with the problems that they've got, do you want an experienced driver in there as well? Sort of, you know, do you want two experienced drivers helping to drive the team? forward much like Renault need um, I don't think it's a place for a rookie but who else are they going to attract if they want to replace Grosjean who else are they going to get Giovinazzi or a rookie or something there's not a whole lot of um, a whole lot of people available um, and the other thing that sort of gets me with Haas is and this is especially due to the fact that it surprises me because they have such good NASCAR team in the States. You know, Gene Haas knows how to put people together into a race team. And part of being in a race team is solving problems. Obviously, that's all you're doing is solving issues and solving problems. That's what engineering is, really. 
it's just solving problems and they got plenty of engineers on the staff so I don't understand why they seem to take so long to fix issues I mean the big issue this year has been well documented is the tires they just can't get them to work they're pretty good in qualifying they're terrible in the race and they can't figure out why and the thing that really sort of surprises me about that is they remember how long it actually took for them to get the brake by wire working it took them like two seasons to iron out the problems with those where everybody else had it sorted out where they were on their way and Haas just never got it sorted out it took them years to get it um, sussed so there's a real engineering problem there at Haas I think as well um, but that's something for them to work out but they're going to be disappointed down there in ninth they would have hoped for better especially after the fact they were fighting for fourth with Renault last year so they, they've had a big fall and of course that brings us on to 10th place speaking of people who've had a fall Williams so they are where they are they've never really recovered from their slow start to the season where the car was late and, and everything else um, they have developed really well to the point that they have sort of really caught on to the back of the um, back of the, the pack at the moment Russell out qualified a couple of cars in Hungary which is the first time they've done that all year so there are sort of glimmers of hope with them um, but how much further are they going to get it's, it's really good that Rocket I think the guy who runs Rocket used to work with Williams or something like that and he's a big motorsport fan so he's signed on he's in there for the long haul and that's really good that gives Williams a, a good stable base to work from and hopefully they're able to take advantage of that and and uh, move forward because I don't think anyone likes seeing Williams at the back and you know George Russell he's doing everything he can do which is beat his teammate and um, really to be honest he, he's really showing why Renault despite testing commits a quite a lot did not actually sign him up because uh, he does not appear to be the driver that he was back uh, back in his first career before his injury shame to say but that does seem to be the way it is um, yeah he's been much slower than Russell it's sort of gone a little bit unnoticed because it's been right at the back and the car's been a bit random but you know, all this talk of, oh, you know, they're giving me broken chassis and all the rest of this, it, it, it's not helping. Um, and you've got to wonder, I mean, at the moment, the car's going to be last anyway, so no harm done. But once they start to claw themselves into a little bit more competitiveness, are uh, Williams going to want Kibitza hanging around, despite how much spon sponsorship he might be bringing? I don't think so. So it's a bit of a shame. So anyway, that is, that's, that's the 10 teams as they are at the moment um, I want to finish off with a bit of a bold prediction and I don't think there's too much left in this season to make bold predictions about I mean Lewis is cruising to the championship now um, bold prediction okay bold prediction this is Lewis's last championship this year he gets six but he doesn't get seven because next year the age of Max Verstappen begins and it's going to be Max is going to be the one winning the titles for uh, foreseeable future. He's going to go on a run like Hamilton's been on. Red Bull seem to be in the ascendancy. He's driving incredibly well. I don't see him leaving Red Bull. I hope he doesn't because I think um, I think he he's he's going to have a good thing going there, especially starting next year. And uh, all right, so that's it. The bold prediction: Lewis's last title is this year, and uh, they'll have a bit of a battle next year but I think Verstappen's going to come out on top from there so anyway that's all I've got so agree disagree anything please comment below let me know what you think about the rest of this season and going on into 2020 maybe even if you've got something to say about the new rules for 2021 let us know what that is as well so uh, yeah that's all from me thanks very much and uh, we'll see you next time